This episode is a swift journey through 70 years of Porsche history. From the 356 to the 911 Targa, and the 917 KH, and the Mission E, 911 Magazine presents highlights from seven decades of fascinating Porsche history. First, we follow the trail of the 1950s and visit California. When you climb inside the car, you just know you're home. The noise of an old air-cooled engine in a Porsche has just been a part of my life since I was a kid. I found Dawn, this time capsule of neglect. For some reason, it just was really attractive to me to see the car thrashed and just kind of sad, and, and uh, I wanted to help it out. I love the parts of the car. I love the detail of the taillights or the steering wheel, and so there's visually so many things about the car that I love. It has this musty, beautiful scent of just years and years of use. Often, I encounter people that have old Porsches, and they haven't driven them. I go, look at my car. Look how thrashed my car is. Let's get yours going too. I'm having so much fun. And it kind of makes them stop and think a little bit. Like, yeah, you're right. It's been a cool story for me to share that with the car, of it, just helping it resurrect it and put it back on the road as an old beater 356. <laughs> It allowed me to really learn about how the car was made and what the car can do. And so all of a sudden I realized it was teaching me what a Porsche is. Whatever your crazy ideas are for the day, that car wants to do it. Because of its poor condition, it allows me just to have fun with the car. Like I don't have to worry about scratching it or putting a dent in it or something. So Don and I just do most of our adventures together. But what is the connection with Don that I have? I think that it's just because it's not perfect. Neither am I, and the challenge together is perfect. That's what's interesting about preserving an old Porsche, is that you're preserving the story the life of the car. Unique image material from the former Porsche engineer and head of research and development, Helmut Bott. In 1967, he tests the aerodynamics of a Porsche 911 2.0 Targa. The challenge, the pristine hairstyle of the unknown lady in the cockpit should emerge unscathed. At the time, engineers used simple woolen threads to show the flows of air over the vehicle body. Over 50 years later, 911 Magazine runs the test again with the new Targa. The hairstyles have changed, but the objective is the same. When the engineers at the state-of-the-art Porsche wind tunnel crank up the turbines, as little wind as possible should enter the cockpit. 9,200 horsepower generate wind speeds of up to 300 kilometers per hour. Of course, today there are much more modern methods of measurement available. A smoke trail and countless sensors and cameras are used, but the good old woolen threads still provide a rather precise picture of the airflow situation. Then, as now, the car delivers what it promises. Even with an open top, most of the wind stays out of the cockpit and the hairstyle is safe. This is Roman Meyer. He studies automotive design in England and draws hyper-realistic pictures. He shares his work with his 30,000 YouTube followers. For 911 magazine, Roman gains exclusive access to the Porsche Vehicle Warehouse to capture a very special car the Porsche 917 KH with the world-famous Gulf paint job. Over two days, his portrait of the racing icon of the 1970s takes shape brushstroke by brushstroke, immortalized in oil.
strictly limited and highly sought after. In 1987, Porsche launched what was then the fastest series production vehicle in the world with the 959 and proved once again Porsche's variability in building sports cars. Its top speed, over 300 kilometers per hour. Only 292 units of the car were built. Celebrity buyers included Bill Gates, Porsche's answer for Roadster fans, the Porsche Boxster with a mid-mounted flat-six engine. With the success of this iconic model, restructuring measures in production, and the same parts principle in which the same parts are used in the Boxster and the 911, the company experiences a rebound after the economically turbulent years of the early 1990s. Porsche renews itself yet again. After the turn of the millennium, Porsche makes its debut in the sport utility vehicle class with the Cayenne. The SUV turns out to be a smashing success, particularly in North America. For a time, four out of every ten new Cayennes are registered between New York and Los Angeles. Zero to 60 miles per hour in 2.5 seconds. An astonishing feat that is actually possible with a Porsche 918 Spider. It becomes the first series vehicle to crack the seven minute barrier on the Nürburgring's North Loop, completing a lap of the almost 21 kilometer circuit in just six minutes and 57 seconds. With its hybrid drive unit, it lays the foundation for a new future of the sports car. Das ist unsere Mission E Cross Turismo. Nach dem ersten Mission E ein Derivat und es bewegt sich auch näher Richtung ein Serieprojekt, was wir in 2019 bringen, also das erste Elektroauto, was Porsche in Serie bringen wird. Ich denke, dass Porsche immer schon in seiner Gesamtanmutung und der Qualität und wie wir mit den Materialien umgehen im Innenraum mal eine ganz eigene Liga ist. Man kann natürlich sagen, wenn wir ein Elektroauto bringen, kann man alles nur neu machen. Aber wir haben natürlich eine große Geschichte mit unserer Marke und wir wollten natürlich auch klassische Materialien anbieten, wie zum Beispiel ein Leder, aber dann eben auch gucken, wie können wir das Leder natürlicher sich anfühlen und nachhaltiger produzieren lassen. Auf die andere Seite haben wir sehr viele technologisch neue Materialien. Das Team guckt natürlich immer über den Horizont und versucht ganz neue Sachen zu bringen. Also ich kann auf jeden Fall schon sagen, dass wir in so einer elektrifizierten Welt uns auch ein Interieur vorstellen können, wo wir komplett auf Leder verzichten. Das heißt, wir forschen in die Zukunft, gucken, wie können wir da wirklich weiter nach vorne kommen. Wenn zum Beispiel ein Auto teilautonom fahren kann oder vollautonom fahren kann, ist es ja natürlich tatsächlich so, dass ich im Innenraum auf einmal ganz andere Möglichkeiten bekomme. Wie in einem Wohnzimmer, plötzlich fällt mir viel mehr auf, was ist die Qualität, die mich umgibt sozusagen, was sind die Farben und Materialien und dann habe ich eigentlich viel mehr Zeit, mich da intensiver damit zu beschäftigen. I would love to drive to the Porsche factory with the car that they built and say, hey, I have all these problems I need to fix. You guys, you know, is the warranty still good? 